Hi friends, in this session we can discuss the classical model of output and employment. Classical economists assumed the existence of full employment in the economy. According to them, unemployment is only a temporary situation. If unemployment existed in an economy, temporarily that will be automatically corrected by the flexible price, wage and interest rates. That is, if unemployment existed, the unemployed workers are willing to work at lower wage rate. As a result, the cost of production decreases. When the cost of production decreases, the price of the commodity also decreases. The decrease in the price of commodity leads to increase in demand for commodities and when demand for commodity increases, the production increases, thus the unemployment problem will be solved due to the self-adjusting mechanism existed in the free market economy. Thus, the classical theory of the determination of employment and output in the economy is based on certain assumptions. The major assumptions are number one, existence of full employment equilibrium in the economy. Second, closed and laissez-faire capitalist economy. They assumed the closed economic model, lack of economic relations with the rest of the economy, then laissez-faire capitalist economy. Laissez-faire economies are those economies which has limited role of government in economic activities of the people. Government should not interfere the economic activities of the people. The role of government is very much limited in a free market economy. Then, perfect competition in products and labor markets. Total expenditure consists of consumption expenditure and investment expenditure. Then, quantity of money is constant. Wage, price and interest rates are flexible. Then, stock of capital and technology are constant. Then, last assumption, another assumption is sales law of market, which implies supply creates its own demand. Now, based on these assumptions, classical economics explains their theory with regard to the determination of output and employment in the economy. They explains the existence of full employment equilibrium in the economy. The full employment equilibrium is explained on the basis of demand curve and supply curve of labor. Demand curve of labor represents the marginal physical product of labor. Since marginal physical product of labor decreases as more and more units of labor are employed. Due to the operation of diminishing returns, demand curve of labor is downward sloping curve. And supply curve of labor is an increasing curve because Supply of labor is a direct function of the real wage. Real wage means purchasing power of money wage. That will be equal to wage by the price. Thus, when real wage increases, supply of labor also increases. As a result, supply curve of labor is upward sloping curve. And the intersection of supply curve of labor and demand curve of labor determines the 
level of output and employment in the economy. At the equilibrium, employment and output, the profit is maximized. At that equilibrium level, marginal revenue and marginal cost are equal and the producers get maximum profits. Here, marginal revenue is the revenue received from the sale of extra units of output by the employment of the additional unit of labor. Marginal cost here implies wage rate. So, the equilibrium level of employment is a level of employment where marginal revenue received from the last unit of labor will be equal to the wage of labor. Okay. Now, the level of output corresponding to the full employment is known as full employment output. Thus, classical economics explains the determination of equilibrium level of employment and output on the basis of the demand curve of labor and supply curve of labor. That is shown in the diagram. In the diagram, there are two portions. The lower part of the diagram shows the demand curve of labor and supply curve of labor. X-axis measures the employment and Y-axis measures real wage rate. Demand curve is downward sloping curve due to the operation of the diminishing returns and supply curve is an upward sloping curve which shows the direct relationship between real wage and the quantity supplied of labor and the intersection point where demand curve and supply curve of labor are equal which represents the equilibrium level of employment that is the full employment equilibrium level of employment in the diagram on0 represents the full employment level and the output corresponding to the full employment of labor is Y0. So Y0 is the equilibrium level of output and N0 is the equilibrium level of employment. The second portion, second part of the diagram shows the equilibrium level of output and the first part of the diagram represents the equilibrium level of employment. Thus, classical economist explains the determination of equilibrium level of output and employment with the help of the downward sloping demand curve and upward sloping supply curve of labor. Now, the full employment equilibrium means lack of involuntary unemployment. At full employment equilibrium, there may be structural and frictional unemployment. The structural and frictional unemployment are consistent with the full employment equilibrium. Structural unemployment refers to the type of unemployment resulting from the structural decline of an industry. When an industry declines as a result of the technological change or some other factors, there may be temporary unemployment occurs in that particular industry. Similarly, frictional unemployment is a type of unemployment existed in between jobs. When Unemployment occurs in decaying industry. These unemployed workers can be find out their employment in the new emerging industry. So, in between the changing from 
one job to another job, there may be temporary unemployment. That unemployment is represented by the frictional unemployment. Both, both of these two types of unemployment are consistent with the full employment equilibrium. And at full employment equilibrium, all persons who are able and willing to work at the existing wage rate can find their employment. Now, we can conclude here. Thank you.